Okay, so in the last example, we looked at filters and I hinted that we can access the pixel values of an image um, within P5.js. And this is a huge topic. Um, image processing is a, is a really big, interesting field, but we're gonna look at a really simple example and it might spark some ideas for you for this project, um, but this is definitely a bonus video. So if you're already like, oh, collage, this seems kind of challenging and you wanna skip this, that's totally cool. Uh, but let's look at how this how this works. So I've gone ahead and um, loaded this waterfall image back in here. Um, it's just you know kind of the stuff that we've already covered so far. And um, let's go ahead and and do some pixel stuff. So it's going to be useful before we dive in though to talk a little bit about uh, raster versus vector images. So if you've ever used Adobe Illustrator. Um, you've probably learned about vector images, but also all the stuff that we've done before this week in P5.js is also all vector. So these are shapes that are drawn with math. So this is lines, circles, triangles, that kind of thing. And they're defined by um, mathematical formulas. So, you know, the X and Y position, the arc of a curve, that kind of thing. Um, vector images are really great because they can be infinitely resized um, and because all you're doing is changing numbers, there's no loss in quality. So you can design an image the size of a postage stamp if it's vector and blow it up to the size of a billboard and it's gonna look exactly the same. Uh, the downside is that vector uh, graphics are not very good for subtle things like photographic images. On the other hand, uh, raster is drawn, let's see, will this let me go back? Nope, that's okay. <laughs> raster is drawn with pixels. Pixels are uh, little blocks of, uh, it's gonna be really hard for you to read that, I'm sorry, single color. Um, and this may seem obvious, but like we talk about pixels and maybe we don't really stop to think about what a pixel is. So a photographic image, like the one here, like the actually what you're seeing on your screen or seeing in a video or a photograph taken with your phone is made of these tiny little uh, squares that are each a single color. Um, so in this case, this image is, you know, I don't know, 600 by 400 pixels or something like that. Um, and what we can do in P5.js is actually access all those individual pixel values. We can read them and we can make changes to them. And that's how things like image filters work. So to do this, the first thing that we need to call is this function load pixels. And load pixels just make sure that we have the most up-to-date version of the pixels on the screen. So it might be that we make some changes um, and load pixels just make sure we have that information. The result is this array called pixels um, that we can access, we can make changes to. Um, and the way this is organized is a little confusing and is, is different if you've ever used the Java version of processing. Um, it's stored in an order like this. So if I have the index here, you know, zero through nine. So remember again, yeah, the um, array is the index. The first one is zero. Then you're going to have R, G, B, A, R, G, B, A, R, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the pixels are one, or the values for the pixels are one after the other, and each pixel takes up four slots in that array. So that means if I want to read this very first pixel up here, um, that's going to be zero through three. But if I want the pixel next to it, it's not the next element in the list. It's actually four down the way. Um, this is confusing. It's hard to deal with. Luckily, there's an easier way built into P5.js. Um, and... Um, it's really easy for us to do this using uh, get. Now we've used get before to get a rectangular portion of the screen, but if we specify only an X and Y position, it's gonna give us just the pixel, uh, a single pixel in that spot. So let's go ahead and let's print a pixel and see what the result is. So I can say let PX equal get X. Uh, let's do zero, zero. In a minute, we'll do this in a for loop um, at zero, zero and we can do console.log px. And you might be thinking like, what is gonna be the result? If we know there's R, G, B, and alpha, um, when I get a pixel, like what is it giving me back? And this is where console.log is really helpful as you're working, you can kind of inspect and see what's happening. And if I run it, we'll see down here, it's an array. And we know it's an array because it's in little square brackets and separated by commas, and we can see the indices here. Now it doesn't tell us 
which is which, we have to look at the reference for that. Um, but this allows us to get those values. And then if we wanted to access, for example, the red value, we could do px zero. And then this is gonna give us a, a red value of 103 for this pixel. Um, we could then do this inside a for loop. So we could do for let x equals zero. And then we could get the, PX, the pixel again, x zero console.log. And this will print out the first five pixel values in the image. Again, these are little arrays that uh, return the RGBA value, um, and we would then need to further split this part. So, okay, this is all cool. What can we do with this? Let's um, let's see. What can we do? So, what one thing that we fun would be to um, randomly change a pixel uh, a pixel color, or maybe for now let's just make it black. So, let's go ahead and we can do four. Let i equals zero. So let's change 5,000 pixels. We would need to do a lot for us to be able to see this. Um, and let's create a random x position, a random y position, and a color value. Now we haven't really done this before, but we can create a variable that holds a color. And let's say we want it to be black. We could do it just like this with fill. We can do it with a single number to make it grayscale. Um, and this is going to basically create this little array of these four values and store it in one place, which is really easy. And then we can use the opposite of get, which is set. And set lets us change a pixel. And we can do the x and y, and then our color. And now if I run this, oh, when we change the pixels, we need to do one more thing at the end. We need to call update pixels. And update pixels is just like load pixels, which gets us the most current version. Update pixels make sure what we see on screen reflects all the changes that we've made. And there we go. We can see 5,000 pixels changed um, to the black. Pretty fun. Let's extend this a little more. Instead of making them all black, let's try swapping them. Now, we may not see this super well because of this image has a lot of the same you know, colors kind of across it, but we can go ahead and do this. So let's do um start x well let's just call this i'm feeling lazy we'll call this x1 and y1 and x2 actually this will just be kind of the same and we'll call this x2 and y2 so we're going to grab two random spots and we're going to change the pixel value so i'm going to say um uh, let c equals get x1 y1 so I'm going to get the color from up here, and then I'm going to set at x2, y2 in the new position. I'm going to set the color to the other one. And now, actually, you can kind of see this. So these are all colors from the image, but they're being moved around. And if instead of 5,000, I did 10,000, we started to get it noisier. Now, you do want to be careful. These pixel uh, commands can be somewhat slow. It looks like on my computer it's doing great, um, but it would be really easy to create a for loop. You know, if I made this three uh, hundred thousand or three million, it's quite possible my code is going to really bog down or even crash my browser. So you want to be a little bit careful and be sure to save while you're working. Um, but this is the way that we can access pixel values and change pixel values. And all the filters we saw in the last example are all basically using this kind of process and some smart math and stuff like that to, um, to change images. So this may be out of the scope of what you want to do for your collage, but this also is kind of a cool tool to just like file away in your toolbox um, and maybe gives you some ideas of stuff that you want to try as well.